right. Welcome, everybody, to this month's ARIS Innovator Demo Series. My name is Stephen Newman. I'm the Manager of Marketing Programs here at ARIS. This month's topic will be covering the SolidWorks Connector for ARIS, and it will be presented by John Sperling, Vice President of Product Management. Before we get started, just to tell you a little bit about the demo series, it's a 30-minute webcast. It's all demo, no sales pitch, and we do these once a month, and each month we feature a different capability of the ARIS Innovator. For more information on previous and upcoming demos, please visit ARIS.com for more details. And just a few administrative items. All attendees are on global mute. And if you have any questions, feel free to submit them in the Q&A panel and go to webinar. At the end of the demo, we'll try to get to as many questions as possible. If we do not get to your question, we'll be sure to follow up with you individually. Lastly, after the webcast, you'll receive an email with a link to today's on-demand version of the demo for your sharing and viewing pleasure. So with all that being said, I'm going to switch it over to John, and we're going to get started. Thank you. Hi, everybody. This is John. Uh, welcome. Uh, today we're going to take a little bit of a different approach to a CAD integration demo. I will be showing you an integration with SOLIDWORKS and Aris Innovator. Uh, the point, though, is not to, uh, to dazzle you with all the, uh, the features of the integration, uh, which there are many, and I, I will be showing the, uh, the uh, SoftTech uh, SOLIDWORKS connector today. But the point is really to show the process and how we're storing the data, uh, how the engineer goes through the, the process in, in a real-life example, and will hopefully illustrate why we uh, believe we have the best uh, platform for CAD data management in PLM. So I'm going to take a very, uh, very simple assembly just for the purposes of being able to really effectively see what's going on. So I've got a, um, an axle assembly here. So I've got uh, assembly with, uh, with two parts. You can see I've got uh, part four, which is the, uh, the axle, and part five, which is the wheels. I've got a, um, a drawing here of that assembly. And for both the assembly and the drawing, we have uh, a, a description property set within SOLIDWORKS here. So one of the things I want to illustrate is the, uh, the property mapping between uh, CAD and PLM. Uh, and if we go back to the assembly, you'll see the uh, description property here. The first thing we're going to do is we're going we're to walk through the basic steps that take place really in any ARIS CAD integration, uh, which starts with the register process. So again, you notice I've just got a, my CAD model has got arbitrary names. Uh, you know, I typed in some assembly name here. I've got some you know, auto-numbered, uh, SOLIDWORKS auto-numbered components here. Uh, so I'm just, you know, starting my design in SOLIDWORKS. The first step is to make that data known within PLM. And the way you do that is to say register do document hierarchy. One of the things that this is going to do is to rename our CAD files to match the company naming standard. And so that, this, this dialogue here is just telling you that to be aware of the restrictions on how that takes place. But um, uh, we're just going to come in here, and you'll, you'll notice some automation going on here to um, uh, detect the drawings. Uh, what I should have said is that uh, you know, not only was there a drawing on the assembly, there's drawings on the, uh, the two component parts, and those were resident in, the, uh, in my working directory, but not in session, but the connector was able to detect all that and bring that in here into the register dialog. So what this is asking me to do is basically select and assign a, a part number for, uh, for each of these components. So there's, there's a number of ways that you can do this, and this can be configured to match your, your company process. But basically the idea is that it's in some way you either need to search for an existing part in PLM, or just go ahead and generate part numbers that get assigned to these components. So this does a couple things. We're, we're doing, uh, really dealing with two types of items in Aris Innovator. We're dealing with parts, and we're dealing with CAD documents. And now part, uh, of course, the name can be confusing when you're dealing with CAD, but when we say part, we mean a part item in the sense of part master, uh, the, the design that you're building within PLM not a CAD part component. The, the, CAD, the CAD files are actually managed by another type of item called a CAD document. And we'll see all of that here as we register this data into PLM. But you'll see what it's done here by 
by picking these part numbers, we've got some proposed part numbers assigned to the assembly and the two components. And you can see that the name field was filled in automatically by the uh, mapping that is based on the properties. And that, of course, is configurable to match whatever properties you happen to be using in CAD. For each of these, I also have, can see my, uh, for example, my related drawing down here. And you can see that that's also being accounted for. So we have intelligence built in to recognize parts that are related drawings. And that can even be more than one drawing. And, and build the corresponding uh, data in, uh, in PLM. So we'll go ahead and say register. And this is just going to go off. And um, it's basically building the, think of it this way, it's building the buckets. It's just creating the containers within PLM for this data. It's not moving any files. It's, um, it's just setting things up. Now, we could at this point have the option to go ahead and, and actually store, meaning, meaning to save the files as part of our, our ongoing design. But I'm going to say no so we can just kind of see what happens at every step here. Uh, so we're going to pop over into the Eris web client. And we'll see now that we have some new parts defined. So these three parts at the bottom, and now we are looking at parts, not CAD documents. So these are part items. And you can see I've got an assembly and two components. If I, uh, if I open this one up here to see the, what's taking place automatically. So basically, the, um, uh, you know, the part number, of course, was generated automatically. The name was mapped over from that description property. It's setting automatically the proper type of, of part, whether it's assembly or component. We can also map, uh, the mapping the same here. You can have a different mapping if you wanted a, a longer description. That could also be mapped from, from CAD or actually typed in during that registration process. And we can see if we go down here to CAD documents, we've got a relationship between the part and its two associated CAD documents, one being the assembly and one being the drawing. So normally, if, if you think about you know, every, every CAD 3D model having an associated drawing, the, the sort of the typical arrangement you're going to have is a part with two related CAD documents. And that all gets automatically created when you, when you do the registration. But if we scroll over here, we'll see there's no, um, there's no files created yet. So it's just basically the, all the connections, all the containers. You know, we could, we could open up the CAD document item here. And, and again, we can see uh, mapped properties and things like that. We can see the connection to the part, but, uh, but no files, nothing else at this point. Oh, and, and back in CAD, should have pointed out, uh, you notice here that the, uh, the files have been renamed automatically to match uh, the part number. So, and and this is this is you know just one option. The fact that uh, we're we're taking that part number, uh, for example, P five thirty seven for the assembly, and we've also are using that same exact number for the CAD document and for the file. You can have those numbers be different between the two. You can have the file names renamed differently. So there's there's quite a few options here. I'm just showing you the sort of the, the default uh, capability. All right. So let's go back into SOLIDWORKS, and now that we've basically registered these components, we can at any time as we're going along through our design process, we can store the document hierarchy, which was basically uh, save, you know, save this uh, model into PLM. Okay, so what, now what it does is it brings up a, a slightly different dialog here, which just shows us uh, all, of, all the components that are modeled. Uh, you can see those in a tree view or in a list view. Uh, in the list view, you will see the uh, drawings separated out from the 3D models. In the tree view, you'll see it like a, a 3D assembly, whereas you, you can come down here and see the related drawing at the bottom. Uh, you can see properties over here. The ones that are highlighted are ones that you can, uh, you can actually edit manually. So if you want to just type in properties as opposed to mapping them from, uh, from the CAD properties, you can do that too. You can see a thumbnail as you're working with your models. And basically, you know, the, the, the connector is keeping track of the current state and whether it needs to be saved or not. In this case, uh, everything is new, so we need to, uh, to save it. And we'll go ahead and just uh, hit the store button and save all that, that information into PLM. 
So basically, even though there's a lot of capability on that screen, there's not much more you have to do than hit store, and it's done. And it does what it needs to do to get the data over into PLM. So again, we'll, we'll hold off at that point, go over and see what we have now uh, in, in ARS. So we'll go refresh our, our uh, listing of our parts. And then we'll go over to our related CAD documents. You can see now that there's some files here. So let's talk a little bit about file handling. I'm going to open the drawing, and I'm going to open the 3D model. Our, our uh, standard for uh, visualization format is PDF. So one of the goals of our CAD connectors is to make sure all uh, 3D models and drawings get automatically converted into PDF. And you can see that we've done that here. So we're, we're tracking the native file, which we, of course, need to do for purposes of just the, the check-in, check-out process and maintaining all of your CAD data. Uh, but we also generate viewable files. But we actually do that a couple of different ways. If you were watching closely here, um, when we were looking at the part, when I first brought this up, you could see there was no viewable file uh, created yet for the, uh, the 3D model. The reason for that is we actually use a server-side process using the ARIS conversion server to do that. So we have built-in 3D CAD to PDF conversion that works for all major CAD systems. It, that just happens automatically when you check in a design. And I think if I refresh this, I, so now, now you can see that got created. So that, that didn't happen during the check-in. That happened in the background automatically. The, the 2D is actually done by the connector. So that's done as part of the store process to uh, generate the, the, the uh, PDF of the drawing and, and check that in. So you can see that now I can come in and if I'm on the drawing here, I can just click on that PDF and I can see my drawing. So anyone that's, you know, not a CAD user can come in and, and see that uh, drawing very easily. I can come over to the 3D and click on that and again bring that up in, I'm uh, just using Adobe Reader here. And this is uh, 3D viewing. I don't know if, if you're not familiar with 3D PDF. This is built into uh, to Adobe Reader. So everyone's basically got a 3D viewer on their on their desktop already. But this is actually only a first step for ARIS. Um, coming in our, our Innovator 11, which will be released uh, later this month, will be built-in uh, PDF viewing, including 3D, which will take place right in the web client. It doesn't require Adobe Reader. Uh, zero plug-in viewing and view and markup uh, across uh, all CAD data, drawings, 3D models, uh, office documents, images, all kinds of uh, content will be able to be viewed. So. This is a very critical step in terms of our overall viewing strategy to be able to generate these PDF files. Okay, so, um, so what we have at this point is really, in, in terms of just managing the CAD data back and forth, we would now just go on and, you know, as, we, as our design evolves, we would create new parts, et cetera, and, and update that and, and keep saving that into ARIS as necessary uh, to share that data and be able to, for people to be able to see this uh, design as it progresses. The other thing that the, the key, the second key step after just basic uh, CAD data management, the second step is to automate the creation of the bill of material. So we're going to um, go back into SOLIDWORKS, and now the, the third step after register and store document is to store the bomb. So basically what this will do is say, okay, we've, we've already created the part items in Innovator, that are corresponding to these components in CAD. Uh, and though, as I said earlier, those could have been selected uh, if they were already defined by somebody. Maybe you have a process to, uh, to request part numbers. You could have selected that part number and assigned the CAD model to it, or you could just create it on the fly, which is the way we did it. But then what you want to do is automate the creation of the bill of material from this CAD model. And so that's done just by clicking on store bomb hierarchy. And so we see now um, not 
it, it's more of a uh, of a bomb view, not not just a CAD view. But now we see things like quantities, which will uh, end up being uh, put into the bill of material. So if we say store bomb, that's successful. That's a very quick operation, and we come in here, we execute our part search and bring up our part and so now we see on the bomb tab we we have two components the wheel and the axle and we have two wheels okay so um, so that's that's the automation of the build material now that's not the end of the story though because um, there are of course going to be components in your bill of material that don't come from CAD. They might come from other design systems like eCAD. They might be entered um, manually. So let's, let's make a manual uh, change to our, our bill of material here. So we'll go ahead and lock this for edit. And we're going to go search for a component to add here uh, directly in, in the web client. And I want to add some grease. This is my, my axle assembly. It's uh, probably going to need some grease. So we'll go ahead and add that component in there. You can see that listed there now. And uh, we can put in some quantity. I think, I don't know, eight pounds of grease ought to probably do it. Um, that's, you can see that's already a released component that we're, or a released material in this case that we're using. And so we'll go ahead and um, save, unlock, and close. Just commit that change with, with the updated uh, component of the bill material. So what I'm going to show you is, is we make a change to this um, assembly that it's not going to overwrite this manual addition. So there's intelligence built in to the bomb management such that the CAD connector knows the components that it's responsible for, the wheel and the axle and maybe anything else that comes from the CAD model in the future. But the grease was added manually so it, it is not to be touched through the CAD integration itself. Okay, so we'll uh, close that out and we'll go ahead and look at the change process now. So now We've, we've got this, um, this design uh, committed in here, and we want to uh, go ahead and release it. So we're going to take a look a little bit at our, our ECO process here. And so we'll go ahead and select these components, and we can add these items along with our CAD documents to the change. Um, those of you that may be uh, already familiar with, with Ares Innovator, um, we have this command, add items to change. This one here is, is, a, is an add-on. It's available on our, um, on our portal. And so you can, uh, this makes it very nice to add parts along with their related CAD documents all at once to an ECO. Uh, so it greatly simplifies the uh, working with engineering change. So if we, um, what we're going to be doing now is basically releasing the, the three parts. So we have the assembly, and that's two components. And then we have six CAD models, uh, three 3D models and three drawings. Okay? So we're going to, we're going to release all of those uh, up to the point of release at Rev A. Um, now, I'm, of course, this would involve more people. We're, um, maybe I'm the administrator here that's defining this change, or this, in this case, this initial release that needs to get put through the system. Um, so I'm, I'm just going to do this all myself just to get, get the ECO workflow through. But just be aware that, of course, this, this workflow would involve multiple people uh, doing the approval. So here is the first step, which is actually just submitting this, uh, this change, uh, change order to be processed through the system. And we're going to have to take it through a few steps here. So now it would be, at this point, it would actually be notifying the engineer to complete, so they would they would come in here and, and, and sign off on that completion. And then finally, there would be some review that would take place. Multiple people could potentially be signing off at this point. And finally, we're just going to fast track this through. Uh, we need to put in our e-signature here, complete that. And we're going to bring this to the point of release. So if you look at uh, all those components now down here at the bottom, you can see that they're all released at Rev A and the CAD documents as well. So, so in our, in, in Aris Innovator, parts and CAD documents are all change controlled items. They all have release levels of revisions and, and states that they go through. 
Okay, so now we want to uh, we want to make a change. So I'm, I'm going to make a change to the assembly. So all I need to do is come in here to the assembly and say, okay, uh, we're going to add it and its documents to a new ECO. So this is now Rev B. And we're going to say that uh, we want to make these interchangeable as opposed to replacing with new components. And so you can see my part in my, is my assembly and my assembly model and assembly drawing. And we're just going to put that up to the point of submitting it for, for design work now. So this, this is a little more, it's a little easier to see the second time through here. So we're going to, as administrator, I'll submit that. At this point, the designer would get a notification that, hey, we're starting a, a, a redesign of this axle. You need to go in and, and do your work. So the way that that would take place is, let me uh, let me just close this out. So let's say you know a week's gone by, whatever, and now I need to go uh, to make this change. So I've, I've received my notification, and I come in here. And one of the one of the nice features uh, that we have with our CAD integrations is the ability to do uh, local workspace management. So I can come in and I can see that. So these, these components, so what, I, what I have here is like a merged view of my local working directory that's managed by the ARIS CAD integration, and which shows uh, Windows information. It also displays PLM information. So you can see that um, the wheel and the axle are released at Rev A, but the, um, the assembly is now at Rev B in preliminary state. So I can say, well, I want to... Um, I want to open this um, assembly so I can work on it now. So because it's because it's Rev B and preliminary, I'm able to actually make a change and commit it back into the system. Okay. So what are we going to do? We're going to add just add a few components here. Um, let me let me just uh, we're going to we're going to make this a uh, super super duty uh, axle here by adding. So now here's an interesting point. The connector actually has logic to determine that you're modifying the assembly and it's going to lock it, meaning it's going to reserve it in Innovator so that no one else tries to, uh, to make edit changes to it. We'll go ahead and add my, my four wheels in there. Okay, I'm not going to try to be too precise about this. Another cool feature is we're going to add uh, a component that's already been created and saved in Innovator. So I'll show you a little bit about how you retrieve things from, um, from Innovator. So if I search for, I've got a gearbox I want to add to this. So I can say, OK, add the gearbox. It brings it up in a little window. And I can drag and drop it over there. Pretty slick. So this way I can take, I can reuse components coming from Innovator. I now can. Uh, update my design. So at, at this point, I've, I've updated my um, CAD model. You can see it updating any necessary. Um, it's telling me that I need to check in the assembly drawing. Handled that all automatically. I'm checking in the assembly, storing that. And then I want to update the bomb. So now you can see the quantities here. You can see that we've got the axle. We've got four wheels and a gearbox. OK, store that. We come into Innovator and go to our parts. All right, so we can see that, uh, and I've got red light mode turned on here, so we can see that we added the gearbox. The grease is unchanged because that was the manually added component, and a quantity on the wheel changed from four to two. And if we go over to our CAD documents and open up the assembly, see my wonderful new uh, 
design here and based on our automatic background conversion, the new design is updated and available for anyone to view. And that's it. That's, uh, you know, that's taking through the process of uh, saving the first time, uh, making changes, updating it, updating the BOM, and having a combined BOM with um, manually added components. Uh, there's one question about um, Autodesk Inventor. Does the connector create 2D PDF from Autodesk Inventor? Yes. In fact, all of our CAD tools, uh, CAD integrations for Inventor, for CATIA, uh, NX, uh, Solid Edge, all the major 3D CAD tools, they all will create a 2D PDF. Where, where saved your CAD files? Um, I'm not sure if I completely understand the question, but um, I just wanted to reiterate, I showed a little bit about um, the local working directory. So when you're working with the CAD files, uh, they are always local as you're actively working on them. We do manage those. Uh, the connector is aware of that directory and keeps track of it and adds the PLM information so you can, you can uh, work with that, uh, with that local directory. You can certainly just delete files there as long as they're already uploaded into Innovator. Um, so it's just an easy way to um, to work locally without ha having to always download from, from ARIS. And there's a question about what's your process for changing or replacing an existing document in ARIS with a newly modeled CAD document. Um, there is, uh, you saw me do the, um, the insert command from ARIS. There's also a replace command. So just like the, um, in CAD you have a replace uh, for a file from local disk, you can replace and search in ARIS and then replace directly uh, in, in the context of that assembly. Um, and I think that's about it. Thank you, John. I appreciate it. Thank you to everybody who attended. Um, we got to as many questions as we could. If we didn't get to your question, it's all tracked, so we'll be sure to follow up with you individually. I just want to let everybody know that next month we'll be having a similar demo. It's going to be going over component engineering. It'll be held January 21st of next year. So visit ARIS.com for more information on that. Thank you all, and have a great day.